okay so basically uh, last time we were talking about some basic section of waves and in wave section for your as you need to know about all the basic terms like the types of wave you know there are two types of waves uh, longitudinal transverse so you need to know about all the basic things like the compression rarefaction process in longitudinal right yeah and you also know about the transverse the crust trough wavelength frequency time period amplitude right mm -hmm. these all topics are same as it is included in your as because these are the uh, base of the wave section right okay so that's why you need to know about that one also so i'm not going to repeat that one because you already know that and furthermore you also need to know about the ripple tank right yeah that is also not a difficult one for you and after that uh the next topic that you want to study from which is known as cro cathode ray oscilloscope did you study that one also or not no okay because cro was included in o levels and igcsc but from uh, last year it was excluded so that's why most of the student don't know about the cro so basically if we start from our first topic of as so that is related to cro cathode ray oscilloscope right yeah okay so cathode ray oscilloscope Okay, so first of all, what is the basic use and what is the basic theme of this CRO or the cathode ray oscilloscope is? Uh, we studied the whole concept of transverse and longitudinal wave, right? But we are not able to observe those waves in transverse form like the ripple tank because water waves are just moving from one point to another and we are not able to uh, just record the reading manually, right? So it was very difficult. And since there are other types of wave also just like sound and just like the light wave. So we need a type of device that converts uh, the waves into wave signal into electrical signal, right? So that will be very easy for us to just record from the device, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we continue with a device which is known as CRO. Uh, you also observe that device in the hospital that actually records the heartbeat of a patient, right? You observe that up and down movement in the wave and that is continuously moving on x-axis, right? So like in the, so do we have to like learn how to read the graph for the CRO? Yes, you need to learn that how to read the graph for CRO because that is the important part of this section because the application of CRO and the purpose of CRO are widely used in the hospital to read the heartbeat because that is again converting the wave signals into electrical signal. So you are getting data of each and every second for that is patient, right? So we need to know about the components of the CRO and the numbers which we are going to record from the CRO, right? Okay. So the basic purpose of CRO is to record or to convert wave signal into electrical signal. Or just simply we can say that it is a device or it is an instrument, laboratory instrument. Which is used to display. So whenever you are going to start any topic, so first of all, you need to write the definition or a small description for that because in AS, uh, you need to write the definition first before the question because they always ask about any physical term or any physical concept. Yeah, for like one mark. So it's part A of the question. Yes. So to measure and analyze. Waveform. And in our daily life, just like the or in engineering uh, industries, we use in circuits, right? Yeah. 
it is also used in medical but mostly it is going to be used because we are studying about the physics uh, the concept of the medical physics is included in your a2 the second year of year as sorry a levels so that's why we only uh, talk about electrical circuit because in this specific topic you need to know about how to record the voltage with respect to time right so basically that's why we written electrical circuits waveform of electrical oh. circuit right okay now one more thing uh, let's suppose if you want to choose between ac and dc so what do you think that are we going to use ac <coughs> in oscilloscope or dc i think you're going to use ac ac because ac continuously changes its direction so that will give you a waveform because in dc there is a direct current so there will always a horizontal line right yeah so basically we are going to use ac current in an oscilloscope and the main purpose of using cro uh, according to our syllabus uh, that is mean to determine the frequency and the wavelength so we use the ac current because it helps us determine the frequency and wavelength because that helps you to change the direction automatically otherwise you need to manually change the direction so that is a difficult task and that's why okay. we use ac right and if we okay. talk about the parameters uh, because mostly we observe oscilloscope in hospitals or in different movies and different video clips so you have some basic idea about that there is a screen let me show you if you never observe that oscilloscope I've seen it. So you observed that. So there is a graph type screen on an oscilloscope, right? Yeah. So there is a complete graph paper on the screen, right? And waves are going to be generated over that. So basically, we use the same concept of graph paper, like x axis horizontal one and y axis the vertical one, right? And there are also controls on the screen that will give you the concept that if you want to change the vertical position if you want to change the horizontal position so it's up to you to adjust the wave because we need to count the numbers and to count the numbers it will be very easy for us to make a graph and just count the number of blocks and then record the readings according to that okay any confusion till now yeah uh, why did you write frequency and wavelength after ac current like what was the context basically the uh, concept of writing frequency and the wavelength is to calculate the frequency and wavelength using cro right so we are going to calculate frequency or wavelength or to record values of frequency and wavelength using cro right so that is the concept okay i got it okay now one more thing is because you know that there is a type of x-axis and y-axis on the graph so for x-axis or we can say that on the horizontal line or on the horizontal scale we are going to mention time because time is independent quantity so time will always x-axis and on y-axis we are going to record voltage right So we're doing voltage. Wait, so we're doing voltage right now because it's AS, but in A2 we're gonna like change it yes. from like voltage. Yes, because the device is actually uh, or this instrument help you to convert into electrical signal. So for electrical signal, we need to adjust according to the current voltage like this. But we are actually calculating uh, the frequency and the wavelength. So basically, this is the concept that we need to learn that how this voltage and time help us to calculate frequency and wavelength, right? got it okay so basically uh we will start like this so you know the concept x axis time and y axis voltage okay because you know that if you uh, calculate the time period so frequency can be calculated by what what is the relation between time period and frequency if you got the value of time period the capital t and if yeah, you it's a number of uh, wave like the number of waves produced in yeah. a time and you learn one more concept in your igcse or o levels that time period and frequency both are inversely proportional right 
So the concept T is equals to one over F, right? So you got the concept that how to calculate frequency. Once you calculate the time period from the screen, you will automatically uh, easily calculate the value of frequency from the formula one over F, right? Got it. Okay. And for the axis of time to want, if you want to record the reading from that, so the main thing that you need to know. Okay, let's suppose if we start from the readings. Let's consider a very simple example for that. So in example number one, let's suppose if we are having a simple oscilloscope diagram, because first of all, we need to uh, learn that how to read the graph, then we will solve the complicated one. So let's suppose this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. There are different divisions on an oscilloscope, right? Got it. So this will be our y-axis and same on x-axis like this. So this is a type of pattern that we got on the screen of oscilloscope. Now we just need a wave to record the values. And let's suppose if we are getting a wave like this, starting from this point, and it will be moving like this. Okay. 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 So basically, uh, whenever you are going to solve the question of oscilloscope, they give you the values or they mention the values of X and Y axis because you need to know about the length of Y axis, the length of one box and the length of the other box mentioned on X axis. So let's suppose if this length of the box is equals to two centimeter, right? And the vertical height of this box is equals to one centimeter, right? It varies mm -hmm. according to the question. So it is not confirmed and it is not a fixed value. So let's suppose if we consider X box uh, or the length of X box as two centimeter and the Y is one centimeter and the other values are like in question, they mentioned that the time base, time base means they are talking about what? X axis, right? Because time is always on X axis. So the time yeah. base is set at the value of time is equals to seven microseconds per millimeter, right? So basically there is a problem because uh, we also need to converse the units, right? First, you need to record the reading. Also, you need to convert the unit. So that is only a difficult part if you learn that part, that how to convert the unit. So otherwise, there is nothing in the oscilloscope to record. So basically, we are having a seven microsecond. We know how to convert microsecond. That is not a difficult task, right? But how to merge it with the millimeter? So that is the question. So first of all, uh, the question is to calculate the frequency. So the question is to calculate the frequency. We know the concept that we can easily find out first the time period, then we just divide it by one. So we will get the value of frequency. But the problem is how to record the reading. So now let's try to record the reading from this graph. First of all, uh, let's see that uh, wave just started from this point. This is the starting point of the wave. And what will be the ending point of the wave if you want to count one wave? You need to count one wave only. Um, so st the ending point's gonna be like in the middle of the next. So it's okay. gonna be like root because four, six. So it's gonna be over here, right? Yeah, because so it's gonna be half, seven. Yes, half trough is already completed. Trust is completely in the middle and half trough on the other side. So basically our wave is going to be completed from this point to this point. So we are getting a complete wavelength. 
so basically one wavelength or one lambda will be equal to because we need to find out the wavelength because we already mentioned we can easily record wavelength and frequency from the graph of oscilloscope so frequency is our main concern to calculate and how we calculate the wavelength from the graph so that is the practical application so basically one wavelength is equals to what the scale mentions that one box is equals to 2 cm so how many boxes completed in one way one complete box two three three complete box and the third one is half right so how many so can be there uh seven seven centimeters because six centimeters so the, yes so the frequency is going to be one over seven then uh okay because no, there no. is also a value of time base right because we just counted the length right yeah we also need to relate it with this time base which is mentioned in the question so first part is easy first you need to record the length of one wave that is our wavelength so basically wavelength is equals to 7 cm right now let's try to solve the time division so basically the time division is equals to if we talk about the time division so time division shows you it is equals to 7 microsecond per millimeter okay so first of all you need to convert centimeter into millimeter right yeah because our scale is in millimeter so we need to convert 6 cm into uh, centimeter into millimeter so what will be the answer 70 70 so we just simply write that 7 cm will be equal to 70 mm and what will be next now we know that micro will be equal to let's suppose if we consider this 7 microsecond so that 7 microsecond will be equal to 7 into 10 to the power minus 6 seconds right yeah so our final time period will be equal to if we talk about time period so time period will be equal to what 7 into 10 to the right that is for microsecond multiply by what the value of millimeter so multiply so, by 70 yes multiply by 70 so you just need to use the units okay so that is a simple thing we first can convert this one and we got the value 10 to the power minus 6 and finally we already converted centimeter into millimeter that is equals to 20 so we just need to multiply these two things and you will get the value of time period right so wavelength multiplied by the time base is going to give you time period uh yes because time base is a value and it is mentioned that microsecond micro is not a big deal that is only a prefix right so we convert yeah. that micro so micro is now uh subtracted from the equation so now 7 second per millimeter and we already convert millimeter or centimeter into millimeter right because yep. that is the length of the wave from the graph or on the oscilloscope screen so we converted from that now finally we just combine all the values and finally we got the answer in we just multiply that one so what is the answer 490 right yeah Four ninety into ten to the power minus six seconds, right? Because millimeter is also a like prefix and micro is also like a prefix. But to find out the actual value of millimeter, you need to read the values from the graph which is given in the question. Any okay. can? No, it's not confusing. Okay. Uh, because this is only a base, or we can say that a basic concept, how to solve this type of uh, CRO that is going to be also include your in electrical chapter that is electricity section because this is also a type of electrical instrument, so it is also included in your electricity section. Now we just need to find out the frequency. So now we can easily calculate the frequency by one over t. So one over t will be equal to just one divided by four ninety micro second. So that will give you the value in hertz. Okay. 
so first tell me the answer then i will tell you one more important thing in this okay wait i have to use a calculator right uh yes Okay, wait, I'm gonna go get mine it's somewhere. Okay, I got 2040.8. 2040.8 yeah like this yeah okay okay basically uh, now we in as there is one more important thing while writing the answer that you need to write your final answer in two significant figures so your answer oh, in two before we say that now it's two. So you need to write in two significant figures. And I hope that you already know about the rules of significant figures, right? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it also two for like O levels or was it three? Yes, it will be also included in your, but that was not a strict marking on that. But on AS, it is also mentioned in your marking scheme that you need to write in your two significant figures answer because that is also going to be included in your practical exam also. So your final I have another question about the exam as well. Um, do we use nine point eight as the gravitational of uh, ex acceleration? Nine point eight two. Uh, basically, in your exam specification from the last year, they mentioned that you need to use nine point eight one. That is mentioned on your first page, so that is not a confusing one because they already mentioned the constant. In AS, because in AS, you are going to have complete sheet of your formula and constant. So you don't need to memorize that also. If you oh, we have like yes. formulas as well. First page, you already get all the formula and your constant values. Because already- So I don't have to memorize any formulas? Uh, there are not much formula in AS. Uh, there is, if there are some formula that was not very complicated one, because while practicing the question, you already got the concept. So that's not a big deal. But in your AS and A2, you will get a complete sheet of your formula that is known as data sheet and the constant values on the first page of your, uh, after the title page. So you need to convert okay. into significant figures. So that will be equal to, you need to uh, shift this decimal point towards left hand side. So your final answer will be equal to 2.0. Wait. If you consider a zero on the right hand side of decimal, so that zero will be significant or not? No, it's not significant. And what if uh, that zero is on the left side, uh, left hand side of the decimal point, like zero? Yeah, point it's It's like important. Because in rule, if you write zero between two significant figures, like 207, so that is significant, right? Yeah. And the ending zero, like if after zero, there is no other digit mentioned over there. So that zero is also counted significant. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to write 2.0 kilohertz. Is it right or not? Um, I don't... Yeah, it's right. Because we shift this decimal towards one, two, three decimal places, right? And I'm only okay. writing 2.0 because two significant figures. I'm not going to write 2.01, right? Or two yep. point something. So that's why 2.0 kilohertz, simple, right? Because okay. now our zero is our ending zero. So that is significant. Okay. Okay. Any confusion? Oh, it's clear. Is there also another scenario, like another uh, example? Okay, I will share another example. Okay, I will show you from your exam paper. Okay. Because in your final exam, you know that all are 
combined from the topics so there is a mixed concept half question is from some other topic and half is from other topic but i will show you hmm this is from waves okay let's find the question these are the question from your waves wait what year which year are these questions from or are these topical this is topicals right this is compiled from the past papers and this is a topical i will send this file to you uh, because all questions are mentioned so that will help us to solve the question with the reference uh Okay, so this Wait. is, and this is question number twelve. Okay. Uh, now you observe that first of all they ask what is the frequency of the source, right? Yeah. They are asking a source of sound has frequency. Sound of wavelength lambda is produced by the source. What is meant by the frequency of the source? So that is not a big deal. Number of waves yes. to be generated or going to be passed through a point in a unit time, right? Yeah. Okay, basically the other part is oscillation and the source and the distance. So that is a different part we will discuss also. Okay, this part is going to be included after CRO because you studied about the equation V equals to F lambda, and now this time for AS you need to drive that also. That is for two mark, right? What? So we should do like V equals to F multiplied by lambda. Yes. will explain you that uh, so that is also a next topic after cro so i will also answer this question and that is also going to be include your uh, in your syllabus so basically the okay. concept is to drive uh, basically to deduce or to drive an expression for speed v because we already know the formula v equals to f lambda we solved all the questions related to wave light sound in our uh, previous level with you by using this formula but we don't know how to drive this formula or how this formula actually comes right so we need to find yeah. that source so first of all basically if we consider a basic formula of speed or velocity so basically speed or velocity is equals to if we consider speed because we are not talking about direction right now so speed is actually mm -hmm. equal to distance over time right yeah and the second thing is uh because we are not going to count distance this time we are going to count wavelength this time in yeah wave. so wavelength is basically uh the wavelength can be like uh, uh it, it's basically the distance yes because it the frequency is the distance per time like how many times the waves go per time it's uh we just need to replace like this we just oh. made a little change in our previous formula and we just replace wavelength in the place of distance because wavelength is also a length distance is also a length right only the concept yeah. distance is between two points and wavelength is for one wave that is also between two points so now after that uh, we just replace with the uh, symbols so v will be equal to lambda over time and we know that if we are talking about only one wave so one wave means uh, if we are taking a specific time so that unit time is known as related to the frequency because we count number of waves in unit second right okay. so yes yeah. let this equation like this 1 over t into lambda right and you already know that 1 over t is equals to what uh it's a frequency yes so i am written over here lit, capital t so capital t means time period so that is going to be replaced by f so v equals to f lambda is the equation that we already learned in our previous level so you just need to deduce this expression for two mark so basically these okay. or four mark are like just a free a uh, question or free marks for this question because you already know the concept you just need to show how to drive this expression right yeah okay uh now part b so first read the values then we will solve the question okay
So if the time base setting is two uh, milliseconds per centimeter. Okay. So instead of using microseconds, they use milliseconds. Okay, so basically in question, it is mentioned that uh, that the waveform of a sound produced by uh, produced on the screen of cathode ray oscilloscope in shown in figure and we are having x axis and y axis same length and the time base set a uh, CRO to 2 millisecond per centimeter. So now you only need to convert millisecond because centimeter is already mentioned on our screen and we need to find out the frequency, right? Yeah. So how you are going to calculate the frequency? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we yes. we're gonna see how much the wavelength is. We're gonna first see the wavelength. So the wavelength is gonna be one to it's three centimeters, and ending till this point, right? So this and this point. It's three. It's three centimeters. Or you could take the down the trough. Yes, the we will trough. also start from the round of value, because you have already a good concept. So that is not a difficult task for you. We will also count from this point till this point okay so basically okay. our wavelength is equals to three centimeter yeah so if the lambda is three centimeter and we know that the time base is two okay. milliseconds per centimeter yes. then we know three centimeter is equal to uh what do you call it it's equal Oh, they already have it in centimeters, so we don't have to convert anything. Just so what we're going to do is... Second, right? And now you just need to convert what? Milli. And milli will be equal to 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 seconds, right? Wait, where do you find milli from? Because, it, okay, I get it, because it's milliseconds. So the centimeter and centimeter cancel out and it leaves you with six milliseconds. The SI unit of frequency is hertz, so we need to convert it that into second first. Then we just simply find F equals to one over T. So that will be yeah. uh, your final answer. So six, six exponent minus three. 170? Yeah, 170. Okay. Oops, now you 70. need to, uh, yes. So basically, again, you need to write in two significant figures and we know that 17 is the significant in this one and zero is not after the decimal. So the ending zero after the decimal is significant. This zero is not significant because there is no decimal point, right? If it was written as seven one point seven zero, so then zero will be significant, right? Otherwise, yeah. we are writing without a decimal point, so that is completely not significant. So our final answer is equal to one seventy. Now you also that already we are having a unit of quantity. In your previous level, you need to write the unit also, right? Because you already learned the basics, so now you don't need to know uh, or write all those things, but you need to solve the advanced application problem. Wait, so we don't have to, in write. this, like in this paper, we don't get the mark for writing this, um, the unit. Yes, because it is already mentioned that you need to convert into hertz. There is no other option, right? So like in all of the questions, they don't ask you to use, write the unit? Yes. I will show you that all type of the calculation questions. Let's suppose if they ask about units, so they definitely give you a mark for that. Like the nanometer is already mentioned. So in all questions, you got the unit. All are mentioned over here, right? Yep. So no confusion till now? No confusion. Okay. So this is a very basic question and a very very basic concept. So basically you learn two concepts. One is for uh, oscilloscope. Second one is how to drive that equation, right? Yes. Okay.